Hello, welcome to Books and Company. I'm Ron Carlson, and today our guest is the writer Peter Baird, who's here with his novel Beyond Peleliu. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. This is quite an interesting, um, full-bodied book that goes a lot of places, but one of the places it goes and refers to is Peleliu. And what is that? It is an island about 4,000 miles west of Honolulu. It is an island on which one of the bloodiest battles of World War II in the mm. South Pacific took place. It is a tragedy because it was a necessary battle. My father was an army surgeon who fought there and returned home with a wound that would affect his life and damage his children and grandchildren's lives. And so this book then, this novel, takes its germ from real life. That's right. That's right. And is this, this is your first book, your first yes. novel. And yes. so uh, what was it about that incident in your father's life that made you, did this just circle around you and circle around you, call to you, to call to you to finally... Well, be yes, uh, I, that's a good way of putting it, Ron. The, my father returned uh, home with a partial claw for a left hand, and he was a brilliant surgeon who oh. had a brilliant future and big-time academic medicine, but with a claw for a left hand. Mm -hmm. uh, he was devastated by its impact. He had terrible depression, drinking problems, uh, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder uh, and this is about the generational impact of combat because as I've learned personally wars don't end when the final shot is fired. Right and so you used um, this moment which is a little bit shrouded in mystery in terms of what actually happened. That's correct. As the German and this uh, what are the other parallels from real life that you use to structure the book? Well, uh, the parallels are that my father, who is David McQuaid, the surgeon, uh, my mother, who's roughly the, uh, the female, strong female character, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia uh, McQuaid, uh, and the son is in some ways me, uh, so it is there are germs of truth, or at least what memory thinks right. is truth, sure. because memory has its own truth. And then it is uh, put together with an enormous amount of research, tracking a family from uh, the injury in Peleliu through moving through southern Utah, where uh, my father became a surgeon and a physician, impaired because he was going to go to a uh, major university, couldn't do that. And his suffering through post-traumatic stress disorder, which is, was unknown then, right. and is unfortunately untreated now mm -hmm. for so many of our returning uh, combat troops from Iraq. I think they called it shell shock? Yes, or? they did, they did. He didn't even know it was that. Okay. He uh, became uh, an alcoholic, he became very violent, he became a womanizer, uh, and of course, I did not understand then, mm -hmm. and indeed not until quite recently, uh, that what had happened to him was not his fault necessarily, mm -hmm. it was the war. And uh, so I wrote this book uh, not only of a way of trying to figure out what happened to him, but to gain an understanding and to forgive him, and frankly, to gain an understanding and to forgive myself. So it's a very personal act, this very, act of writing this fiction. Very, very. You, um, one of the narrative designs that the book has is, is its opening, the whole idea of the structure of the book. Do you want to read the opening? Sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> the opening of the book is written by David McQuaid, and it is written from Who's the son. The son, who was became a big time trial. The son is uh, incarcerated. A letter from prison. And this is a letter from prison. It was written to his uh, son Jim and his daughter Julie, and it is uh, as follows: Dear Jim and Julie, thank you for your letters and concerns, but please don't worry about me. It turns out that prison isn't all that bad for a lawyer when his clients are inmates, guards, and the warden himself. 
Here, I'm the big house counsel, and my perks include trustee status, an office, a computer, a law library, and a comfortable cell. Best of all, I've had time to do some research into our family history, and specifically into the World War II Battle of Peleliu that your grandfather fought. As the enclosed manuscript suggests, I've also done a great deal of writing. You are not the only ones who have asked why I would risk losing my liberty and my license by taking the life that was, for all practical purposes, over. Even harder for everyone to understand is how I could possibly find peace in a place like this. As with so many of life's questions, there are no answers, only stories. Partly remembered, partly reconstructed, this is mine. Love, your father. So then, the novel starts with this letter, and then we're going to read to find out why he might be there and right. what he might find it, out. It then starts in uh, <clears throat> the early 20th century when he is a child in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and his parents are Scottish immigrants, just like my father's parents, and um, his parents die, and he is an orphan, mm -hmm. and he is driven to become a physician, indeed a heart surgeon. And um, just as he uh, hits his stride and ready for his residency, he is drafted into World War II and sent to uh, the South Pacific mm -hmm. to, among other places, the island of Peleliu, which the uh, Allies thought would be a two-day battle that uh, it would be good for morale, mm -hmm. and there were 13,000 Japanese soldiers hidden in the tunnels of the mountain range on Peleliu. So rather than two days, it was well over two months. Rather than a couple of casualties, there were thousands, 9,000 American casualties. Uh, it is one of the worst chapters in our uh, South Pacific military history because it was unnecessary. There was no reason to fight that. It was thought by the military brass to be undefended, unprotected, maybe a hundred or so Japanese soldiers gar uh, garrisoned there, which was mm -hmm. wrong. Right. Now, did you... Um, it sounds to me like you've done your homework. And so, did you uh, do research on Peleliu, the Battle of Peleliu, oh, yes. and was it difficult finding information on Peleliu? Uh, not really. It, Peleliu has been rediscovered, if I can okay. call it that, and there are now books, of uh, quite a number of books recently written about it. Uh, even the military has now taken a good look at it because it is a strategic lesson of how not to uh, fight or invade. Actually, they invaded on the basis of faulty intelligence, I and that, that seems to be something that is, happens more than once in our history. Yeah.